But the first program, literally the first program that um, I implemented was a truancy initiative mm -hmm. with these schools. And the reason that I did that is that I view education as the number one tool to be able to get a child out of, of um, childhood into adulthood with mm -hmm. all of the tools. That's what I talk about with yeah. kids. So that you know you have a set of tools that you need to come uh, into adulthood with. And so going to school is a very, very, very important part yeah, of that. It's empowering, isn't it? It's I mean, very empowering. Background impacts us all, but you know, uh, as a young person, you can really take charge of your life through your own education and preparing yourself for life after you high can. school. You right? can. So uh, can you clarify the truancy law for us? What do as community members, parents, you know, school folks, what do we need to know about truancy? Well, truancy uh, means that the child is not going to school on a regular basis. So, I have jurisdiction through my court because uh, because it's uh, children, right. and so the law applies to youth up until the age of 18. And we have found that if kids are not going to school, that they get involved in criminal activity. Sure. So it's a cause effect. So you have you have a, a double reason, if you will. You, you not only have the selfish motivation for the child to have all those tools once they're, once they're an adult, but right. you also have just the, the, um, the response in the community. Uh, that we don't have as many crimes. And in fact, our delinquency rate has gone down by 85 percent. Wow. And I view um, the court's collaboration with the school system mm -hmm. as pivotal to uh, what we have been able to achieve as a community. And that's a very unusual decline. Yeah, so it's we a have, thing. oh, it's fabulous. It's yeah. fabulous. It's, it's, it's quite extraordinary. So, what are the uh, it, People miss school for lots of different reasons. They do. Right, doctor's appointment, maybe a family has a vacation that they can't schedule during school, during school breaks for some reason, it falls into the school day. Uh, we try to, to help people limit that as much as possible, as I'm sure you do too, mm -hmm. but it does happen. Uh, and then there are times when students are supposed to be in school and they're not. So how do you make the distinction and when does it become an issue that is brought to your attention? Well, there's something called chronic absenteeism, and I think that is a nice spot to start. Mm -hmm. um, this protocol was started in 2001, but the concept of chronic absenteeism is relatively new nationwide, so we were way ahead of, yeah. the, of the game from a national perspective. And the evidence, the studies are very clear that if a child is missing 10% or more mm -hmm. of their classes, their education, then there's a, an effect on progression in education. No yeah. So, in chronic absenteeism means that you have one absence here, one absence there, and, and previously people were looking at whether we had consecutive days, but mm. the beauty of the protocol um, for Midland Public Schools, because it's my protocol, yeah. so I do enforce it, um, is that we're looking at um, children our first cue is five days of missed absences, which mm -hmm. sounds relatively small. But when we went back and we looked at the studies and looked at what was really triggering the behaviors of the children, they're all of a sudden involved in delinquency, yeah. five absences was kind of the trigger. So then that triggers a protocol of contact with the school and then the definition is 10 days. So okay. at 10 days, I want to see those kids. They get petitioned in. Sure. Um, but there's also what I consider to be a very user-friendly, um, family-oriented um, protocol that works with the families right in the schools. So the idea was that the attendance officers in each of the individual schools mm -hmm. They know the kids the best. Right. They really do. So they know when to bring it to your attention. They do. They do. So one of the first things that we did was deputize uh, the attendance officers in each of the schools. Mm -hmm. So we went from one, well, actually a half of a position to every building has an attendance officer that is 
um, sworn in by me, who is an officer of the court, okay. and they are they are authorized to bring a petition before the court. But the cool thing, uh, that's a technical term, yeah. um, the cool thing is that uh, there are interventions before court, and, sure. and actually we have found that it's only about 20 or 25 percent of the cases that actually end up going to court because the school has a meeting with right. the parents mm -hmm. and, or the guardian and, um, and, and the, uh, the student to find out what's going on. And the example that I usually give is the attendance officer will know if a child has cancer and is undergoing chemotherapy. Right. The tragic, you know, sure. kind of a circumstance where, of course, we're not expecting that child. That's not a court issue. That is right. not a court right. issue. That is a, a, a horrific family situation and a personal situation for the child. But what we see with the children who, who um, gravitate to delinquency mm -hmm. is that it's um, five to ten days. We're we're seeing that uh, they're not they're not in school. So there's a meeting at the school building. Excuse me, the school building with the principal, the attendance officer, sure. the attendance officer who's a court officer, and um, they um, draft and come up with together in a, a collaborative way with the family mm -hmm. the contract for sure. the attendance of that child, and that triggers two things. First of all, the the school knows that they've communicated it and the parents understand that this is a serious matter. Right. There's a responsibility. There is there. a responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. And um, anybody in Midland County knows that school is very important to me, to Judge mm -hmm. Allen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I will enforce it. That's great. So, well and like you were saying it's it's School and education is empowering and a great equalizer, so it's important in that it way. Is. And it's also a question of if you're not in school, then what is happening? And there can be some real negatives. So to you, the to what the research has shown and the evidence from the program has shown that once we get to five days of missing school, that that's sort of a warning sign that mm -hmm. something's not going the right way. And by ten, we're into a truancy issue. So in that range is when the attendance officers will start to work with families. Correct. Correct. And then after 10, there's a 10 absences. Sure. Uh, unexcused absences, right. by the way. Yeah. I we're mean, not talking about missing for a sporting we're, event. We are or not. For a we, team sport or correct. for school or something we like that. We are not. But, we're talking about unexcused absences. Right. So at that point, a meeting is set up with our intake officer. Okay. And um, she's. So we're going to the next level now. We're going to the next yeah. level because we haven't had compliance. Sure. So we're, we're beyond the, the 10 days. So. Our intake officer at the court interviews and pulls the family in and explains the truancy laws right. and explains that if there's noncompliance that a petition can and will be filed at that point. Okay.